Hi, my name is Elijah and I would like to show you how to deploy a Windows Server instance on IBM Cloud. Okay, now setting up uh, a server on IBM Cloud requires you to have an account. Just like any other cloud computing platform, you'll need to have an email address and also the credit card details so to be, to access IBM if you don't know how to access IBM cloud you can always use Google and search for IBM cloud just like that Google will show you everything you need to know now you all you have to do is to click IBM cloud and you will be taken to the website uh, for IBM for the platform if you don't have an account you're gonna have to click get started for free and then set up an account uh, or you create an account with them for me I already have an account with IBM what I'm gonna do is to uh, log in so I'll log in with my uh, my ID and a password and then I'll be taken to uh, my IBM Cloud Console or Dashboard. So when you log into your uh, uh, IBM Cloud account, you'll be taken directly to your uh, to your dashboard. This is how a dashboard looks like, the IBM Cloud dashboard. It will show you uh, a couple of resources, how much money, uh, the resources you are running and how much uh, you're being charged per resource you, that you're running. Now, the first time when you create an IBM Cloud, they're gonna give you some free credit. It will depend maybe on the region or service but they are likely to give you some free credit which you can take use and, and begin configuring stuff on this platform. Now to run a Windows virtual instance on IBM Cloud, we're gonna click uh, catalog. Uh, there are several ways how to go there but uh, basically I would like to use this uh, method. You click catalog and uh, you go to compute so you click compute and then what you're interested in is to create a virtual server for Clask. so we click virtual server for Clask. we click virtual server for Clask, and then when you look at this interface you you can uh, select the the particular uh, settings that uh, that will that uh, that are in accordance with your needs, your server needs. Um, for us, we we shall select public. You can select dedicated. You can select transient. You can select reserved. For now and for the beginners, we you can you can start with public, and then I public instance you have to name your host name the name the host name of your server you can name your server anything you want you can call your server maybe Windows server there is no standard naming system or start there is no standard naming requirement for your server you can name it anything you want now um, you can also give your server a domain this is just uh, it's not so essential you can even leave it by default because IBM by default will assign will assign you some values on these settings so if you can't name it you can just leave it by default now you can also select the quantity of the uh, the, the quantity of the instances that you want to run IBM allows you to select the amount, the number of in server instances you can deploy at once. So you can select the number of servers that you would like to run. In this example, we are, we're gonna select one 
uh, server instance because that's what we are interested in. Uh, you can also select the billing method. There are two billing methods that are offered by IBM. Basically, there, there could be other billing methods, but the most commonly used billing methods on this platform uh, hourly billing and monthly billing. The hourly billing means that they're gonna charge you based on the amount of hours uh, your instance will be running. So when your, your instance runs for 10 hours, they're gonna charge you for 10 hours. When your instance runs for 20 hours, they're gonna charge you for 20 hours. When your instance runs for one hour, they're gonna charge you for one hour. So you can select hourly or monthly, depending on your needs. Uh, so the hourly bidding method is just basically known as the pay as you go. So you pay as you use the resource on this platform. Now, the hourly method is actually uh, friendly uh, when you're just running a small project and you don't want to pay for the whole month or to make a monthly commitment. So it's actually uh, one of the, the friendliest means of uh, deploying the servers on, on, on these cloud computing platforms. Now, we will select hourly. Uh, the next thing, location. Where do you want your server to be uh, deployed? If you want your server to be deployed, uh, in, 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 definitely there are different uh, server locations that you can select. There is uh, North America West, North America South, North America East, uh, North Asia Pacific, uh, there is Europe, there is South America. So you can select the location that is prefer that is that you prefer to deploy your server. Um, I will leave it by default for me. Uh, I will leave it uh, to Europe. Uh, and then here you can select the size of the server you want to deploy. So as you can see, there is two virtual CPU cores. There is and also four GB RAM. Uh, they also give you Sun. Uh, storage type and this instance they're gonna charge you 0 0.094 dollars per hour so they're gonna charge you that amount of money as you can see from the right side they are showing here the amount of uh, money they're gonna charge you per hour which is 0 0.094 uh, dollars per hour and now uh, the next step down here is to select the operating system. So you can select any operating system that you want. You can select CentOS, Debian, uh, Microsoft, and stuff like that. We are interested in uh, in Microsoft. You can also you you also need to select the version of Microsoft that you want. If you want to select this version, and uh, you can select this the, the Microsoft Server 2019. You can select Microsoft Server, Microsoft Server 2016. I would go with 2022, the latest Microsoft Server. However, you should also know that when you select uh, a premium operating system, they will charge you for the, for the license of that operating system. Previously, uh, they were without without the operating system, which are without the, the premium operating system, which is Windows, they were charging us this amount of money. But uh, because uh, we have selected the Windows, they're going to charge us $0.186 per hour. Let me show you how what I'm meaning here. When we select a free operating system like CentOS, we're going to be taken back to the default pricing of our server because sent OS is free so you can use that one sent OS for free and without having to pre, uh, to pay the premium license you know now because we are selecting windows they gonna add an extra charge to cater for the Microsoft license so that's why uh, the amount has uh, slightly increased as you can see we would be charged 0.186 dollars per hour now we have selected windows and the version is 
Microsoft, Win, uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2022. You can select any uh, version that is suitable for your needs. You don't have to select what I'm selecting you. I'm just guiding you how to do it. You can select whatever you want and it's up to you and it's up to the budget you have. Um, the second, the other thing is to, you can scroll down, uh, but you can leave the boot disk by default because they will ask you, but you can add uh, extra disk if you want, but the more you add these kind of resources, uh, the more they are going to charge you more money. Um, now the, the network interface that is, a, that is attached to your server, uh, by default, uh, IBM will assign by default a hundred Mbps. Uh, you know, they will give you a hundred Mbps free, but they will charge you an extra amount for one Gbps. You know, this then for the network capacity. You know, so if you want like more speed for your server, data transfer speed you may have to select one gbps and uh, they will add some they will charge you 0 0.033 dollars uh, per one gbps you know so when you select that uh, you can select that you know depending on what you your needs you know what you did if you don't have uh, applications that require much much bandwidth then you may select just the 100 mbps you know but if you have like high high bandwidth intensive applications that require high speed connection, then you may need one Gbps. Now, uh, the the other thing is to when you move down here, these other settings you can leave them because you don't need them. The other important thing that you need to put into consideration is the, the security group, the private security group and the private the public security group and private security group so uh by default ibm will create for you uh, these security groups you know by default there was this they will set up if you know that you know how to set up these security groups you can go ahead and do that but by default they will create default security groups with some basic rules attached on them now uh, on the private security group, you can select all. You can select uh, uh, allow HTTP, allow HTTPS, allow outbound, allow RDP. So the remit is actually five rules. They allow you to set up these five rules: one, two, three, four, five. So when you select the, the, the other rule, they cannot allow you to select this other rule uh, because no. Uh, if because since the most one of the most important uh, uh, role that you have to select is RDP because you need this protocol you need this port to be open to access your server on the local machine so you have to select this RDP port uh, and also the public security group you also do the same uh, you select all these rules and most, most importantly, make sure the RDP port is actually open. Now, uh, we've selected the security groups. Basically, these are the most basic settings that you need. Uh, you need to select for now. If you are an advanced user, you can go ahead and, and customize all the settings there that you need based on your needs. But for a beginner, for a basic user, these are the settings that you need. Let me take you through one more time. The first thing that you need to do is to select uh, the type of watch server that you need. You can select public, you can select dedicated, you can select anything that you want. For the basic setup, you may start with the public multi-tenant server instance. The second thing that you need is to name, to give your, your, your instance um, a host name. You can name your instance anything that you want. The other thing you need is to select the quantity of servers that you need to deploy. If you need more servers, you can increase the number based on your needs. The other thing is the location. You can select the location that you want 
based based on the region or country uh, where you come from you select the location that is actually near you the other thing is to select uh, the type uh, the profile you know the, the resources attached to your server you know uh, you can actually if you want more resources uh, if you want a bigger server you can select view all profiles and then you can select any of the profiles down here because they provide you uh, with several servers that you may need if you need like uh, with servers with high computing power then you can select this and then select maybe certain virtual cpu cores and and set it to gb of ram uh, if you want memory optimized servers then you can select any of these instances based on the needs that you want if you want like uh, anything that you want is actually provided here now um, for our case we will go with the default the settings the default settings uh, but if you want more resources you can just view profiles and then select the the amount of resources computing resources that are suitable for your uh, needs now after setting up everything you've selected the network interface if you need one gbps you can select it but they will charge you an extra money and also uh, the operating system that you choose like windows uh, is a premium operating system and they will charge you for a license fee based on the time you're gonna use it so they will charge you per hour or per month based on the pricing model that you've selected now uh, the security groups you need to make sure uh, the security group you you allow these ports or the, these rules to be open so that you are able to access your machine uh, on the internet but also on your local machine using rdp if you're, you're running windows if you're running ubuntu or uh, linux you have to allow this port the ssh port to be open now this is a windows instance so we don't need or we don't need necessarily need uh, to allow ssh now after configuring everything you have to uh, click create so we will click uh, create and then we wait for ibm to validate our patches so it is actually validating and if you our purchase is accepted as you can see your order for this server which is windows server in, we've named it windows server was successfully placed and you can view it in your device list shortly now what they are meaning here is that um the, uh, we've actually succeeded placing this order so uh, we are for the, our server instances now uh, provisioning and we are waiting for it to be accessed to be ready to be ready for access now the other thing as we wait for the server to provision the other thing that you you, you have to keep in mind is that uh, IBM by default will generate for you the password for your server so you don't that's why we never configured the password uh, when we were setting up when we we're selecting uh, the, the, the features uh, when uh, during the, the, the during the time when we are starting to set up the server so we didn't uh, put the password for our instance by default IBM cloud will uh, generate the password for you and then when the server is ready to run you're gonna see uh, those details which you will use to access your machine so uh, as we wait for the machine to provision you have to click on the machine this is our machine that we are interested in so you click uh, you click on it uh, so that you are you can access the password and the IP address the public address uh, public IP address of the machine now the machine is still provisioning it may take some bit of, some time so you have to be patient and the and the system uh, does its thing you don't have to worry 
uh, you'll know when the machine is ready to uh, to be uh, to be accessed remotely uh, for now you can take some coffee or you can do some other things as you wait for the machine to be ready uh, for access It is still provisioning, so you have to uh, you have to take uh, you have to wait a little bit. It's gonna provision. It is still provisioning, so you have to wait. And as the pl the system does its thing, um, you just have to be patient. Uh, and then you can as well try to refresh the page and see if uh, the server is ready. Maybe. It could be ready and ready for connection. Still, it is it is still provisioning, so you have to be patient. Still, Provisioning is still going on, it's going, so we have to, uh, to still be patient. Uh, sometimes it may take a little bit of time to provision, to complete the provisioning, so you don't have to panic or freak out when the provisioning is running. So when the process completes, you will be notified or you will see uh, here that it's running, the status that is running. You can as well keep refreshing the page and see if the provisioning is actually complete. Uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, this uh, this is the subnet to our server. You know, the the server our, the server is allocated a subnet when you create um, when you create a, a machine or a server. It's gonna be deployed in a, a given subnet. So by default. Uh, by default, uh, IBM Cloud will create for you the network or the, or a subnet automatically. Now, when you click, these are the network details. This is this is the private IP address, and this is the public IP address. I, I mean, this is not the public IP address. We don't want to confuse the things here. Let me repeat it once more. What you're seeing here is just this. They are telling you this is a subnet. The server belongs to this subnet. Now, if you wanted to access uh, the, uh, the the public IP address of the server, you may have to 
just click you click there as you can see this is a, we are in a subnet so all you need to do is to go and try to find the name of assigned to your server the, the host name of your server which is for us we uh, for me i named this server windows server so you have to find windows server and access the ip address that is attached to that server so this is the ip address the ip address attached to windows server or to anything that you've named your server to you will find it here let me let me repeat one more time so that you understand when you scroll down when you scroll down you have to click here you have to click and now as you can see this is a subnet all these are the possible ip addresses that are that are that could be assigned to your subnet many of these ip addresses are no uh, you can't use them because they are reserved they, they they don't belong to you as of now but if you are if you keep on running more instances they they are likely to offer you all these uh, any and of these ip addresses uh so but for now this server they have assigned this server they have automatically assigned this ip this server an ip address which is this one so this is the ip address attached to our server so the best way is to copy this server and find uh, where to, to paste it uh, or to save it on a log machine i use notepad you can use notepad and paste it there in, a, in your notepad or you can also save it or maybe you can save it on your desktop we call it ip address now let's try to go back and see if our server is ready let's try to refresh one more time okay now the server is actually running now as you can see our server is already running it's ready to be accessed now as i said to find your ip address you you're not gonna find the ip address of your server here it's not gonna be here the details you're gonna see here is the name as assigned to your server the id uh, the location uh, and stuff like that the size you can also resize it if you want you click here and things like that but if you want to access the, the ip address of your server you just have to just go down here now you click uh, as i told you you click and then you find the server your server is this one this is our server and this is the ip address assigned to this machine now uh, we will save this ip address uh, you can copy it this you can copy this ip address and save it on your local machine for future use and then let's go back the other thing that we are remaining with is to get our login credentials as i told you ibm cloud when you're creating a server instance especially when you're creating the virtual class key servers uh, the system is gonna generate the password automa automatically for you so to access the password you go on your right on the right hand side here as you, as you can afford this cursor and then click passwords so you can see this is windows software and the username is administrator and the password is already is automatically generated for us you can show the password 
no the password you can show it and then you copy the username you can copy the username and and paste it on, on your file on local file and then you also can uh you can also copy the password you can copy the password and and paste it on, on on the file on the local file so you can save it for future references or keep it on in a safer place uh where uh, where it could be accessed in the future now these are the details that we need we need a public ip address we need a username and we need a password these are the details that we need to access our machine our machine is already running and it's just we, we can just have to access it right now now on your local computer you need another dp client if you're running windows you just have to access remote desktop connection so on your windows you have if you have a macbook or i mean mac os uh, you can still uh, connect with uh, another dp client uh, that comes with mac os any other dp client can work so on windows is windows is remote desktop connection client now what you need to do is to copy the ip address you can copy it and paste it and then also copy uh, the username and then also copy the password now for future connection if you wanted to access this machine I, without having to log in you just have to select allow me to save credentials so you're gonna save these credentials uh, and then maybe you can uh, save the profile the other dp profile on in, in any location you want um you can save it um, i'm saving it on desktop you can save it anywhere that you can easily access the profile uh, let me call it windows server and then this is another dp file so you save and then also you, you then you click connect now if the details that you've put here are correct you will be prompted to uh to paste the password and then proceed as you can say as i said you can copy your password and then and then paste and maybe you can say remember me and then click ok so uh, this is a, a common uh, pop-up if you are used to connect using rdp you know what this one means you can say don't ask me then say yes ladies and gentlemen our windows vps server has been successfully deployed on ibm cloud it is simple as that you don't need to be a professional you don't need to be a devops engineer to do it you can just follow these steps that i've told you and then you deploy the virtual server with windows installed on ibm cloud here you can you can do whatever you want with your server you can use it to stream videos you can use it to edit videos you can use it to do anything that you want with your server you can even use it to access the internet you can use it to access the internet this server everything you want to do with that ladies and gentlemen 
I would like to thank you so much for watching this video and for always being one of my subscribers who follow these tutorials. Please, I beg you, I request you, I don't know whether using the word begging is right, but I'm requesting you humbly to subscribe to this channel. Most people, they watch these videos, but they don't actually subscribe or even like the video. If you like this video and you like this tutorial, if this tutorial has been helpful to you, you can support me by subscribing, by liking this, by, by liking the video, and also by hitting the notification button. And then that is all. That is all what I need from you to watch my tutorials, to subscribe, to hit the notification button, and to like the video. That is all I request from you. Thank you so much. And I hope that you subscribe so that you don't miss out tech tutorials like this about cloud computing, ab about DevOps, about programming, and any other tech topic uh, we will be talking about. Thank you so much, and I wish you the best.